Floyd's in the Champions Cup, but still remain on blemish in the Manning Cup. Let's take a look at the Mona High starting line. Number Keen Bernard is between the sticks. The back four of Dante Peralta, Stefan Johnson, Robinho Gordon, and Maquan Parchment. In the middle of the park, Alex Suazo, Carlton Brown, and Denzel McKenzie. They're number 10 with 10 goals and 20 assists so far this season. Incredible figures. Kishane Gordon will be on the left. Uh, Romarian Thomas will be on the right with eight goals through the middle. Damarian Harris. Yeah, and they look to play 5-3-2, uh, but you know Craig Butler, his system rotate. Denzel McKenzie, you can't say too much about him. A very versatile player, central defensive, mid-central, mid-attacking, mid-left side, right side, plays everywhere. Has a good shot on him as well in the third season. Dejon Davis is between the sticks for St. George's College. They have a back four of Jindu Powell, Shaquan Clark, O'Neill Mitchell, Michael Pennant, and Ajani Peart. Xavier Taylor, the hard-working number six, will be the holding midfielder behind Adrian Reed and Tayshawn O'Neill up top, Brian Burkett. They're number 10 with 20 goals uh, so far this season, as well as 11 assists. Matthew Spence is alongside. As we take a look at the full-time highlights here, and it was a little cage in that first half, you know. Mona did so well. Thomas, the instigator-in-chief, creating quite a few chances and creating trouble along this right hand side ball played inside davis held on to it and st george's college they responded at times broke it with the effort that was wide of the mark on that occasion he wasn't altogether accurate this afternoon and then the ball played inside the box the header off the bar Good work there by Kashane Gordon to get on the end of it. But uh, finding the woodwork and then the moment late in the first half. They just couldn't clear St. George's College. And it was that boy, Romarion Thomas, getting his ninth goal of the campaign in the shadows and putting that over the line, giving Mona the lead. Just before the halftime interval in the 39th minute of play. And they were ecstatic. But they would respond, St. George's College. A few minutes later, Taylor with the effort, bang, off the bar, then off Bernard and across the line. You have to give credit to Taylor. He's still looking for his first goal this season though, an own goal awarded against Akeem Bernard. But St. George's College didn't mind. And it was 1-1 before the interval taylor taking the acclaim of the crowd in the second half more opportunities they were were restricted to shots from outside the box but this was magical from denzel mckenzie wonderful kick look at the power look at the accuracy mckenzie getting his 11th goal of the campaign with a stunning shot on target and it proved to be the difference in this one they could have had more gordon sending this across davis couldn't quite hold on had to put his life limb everything on the line to stop a shot coming in and an opportunity here and in the way was bernard just stopping that one coming up big in the end for mona who celebrated with the energy that they gave for all of the 90 minutes here. As we take a look at the full-time match statistics, Mona, they had 14 shots, six on target. They were dominant in this game, especially in the attacking third, St. George's College. Eight shots, three on target. They were also quite physical, St. George's College. Two yellow cards apiece as well. And you can see the corner kicks for, well, I'm sure St. George's College had a couple of corner kicks in that as well. And in the end, the possession at 53%. It is now time for the Didsel Man of the Match. And he'll be getting his award, Romarian Thomas. 
Yeah, that's right. Thank you so much, Donald. Romario Thomas, the man of the match, being presented by Kaden Webley, the junior brand manager of uh, Digicel. Thank you so much, Kaden. Uh, Romario, talk to me about this historic uh, event. Talk to me about this historic event for Mona High. How good do you feel about achieving a very first final in your school's history? Well, I feel very great for going into the final, Manning Cup final, for the very first time. Yeah, talk to me about your game, though. Do you think you had the best game possible for today? No, it wasn't my best game, but I, I tried my best. Well, now, your focus is on the final. Um, are you expecting to play any team in particular or whoever comes in front of you, you're ready? It doesn't really matter. I'm very prepared. All right, well done to you. Congratulations Thank again, you. Romario. Yeah, Romario and Thomas there from Mona High, the man of the match, embracing coach Neville Bell from St. George's College. Coach, we know it's always tough to lose a semi-final, um, but if you look back at how things would have gone today, where are some of the things that you would have hoped could have been done better by your St. George's College team? Well, it's always tough to lose, period, whether it's a semi-final or not. We didn't do enough. We didn't do enough. I thought we matched them on the field, but in front of goal, we didn't do much. And after they, they, they scored the second goal, as you saw, they put everybody behind the ball. It's always tough. Yeah. Um, but I'm very proud of these kids. Um, you know, we, uh, we did one better than last year. Last year, we ended up fifth, never made the semi-final, never made the Champions Cup. This year, we're in the semi-final, we're in the Champions Cup. Um, so, God willing, next year, we'll do even better. Yeah, speaking of next year, how do things look for you in terms of the players that you get to retain and possibly the new players coming into the program? We shouldn't be bad, you know, we shouldn't be bad. I think of the squad of about 25, I think we lose about five or six. So we shouldn't be bad, but, you know, we kind of have to get over this one first before we start thinking about next year. But, you know, to be honest, congrats to Mona. They worked hard. Um, they've been working hard all season. Um, so congrats to them. And I, I wish, I don't know who will, they will meet in the, in the final, but I wish both teams good, good luck. Thank you so much, Coach Bell. Yeah, man. Yeah, Coach Bertis Bell there from St. George's College, embracing Coach Craig Butler, the technical director of Mona High. Coach Butler, joined by Coach Peralta. Tell me about this game. How are you feeling creating history once again for this Mona Heights school? Boy, just just totally elated. Um, feeling it for the boys mostly. I mean, they're putting a lot of hard work. And to get here is excellent for them. You know, really happy for them. Really happy for them. Yeah, going up 2-1. And then you park the bus again, similar tactics to what you did against it at your technical high school. Is that something that is going to become a staple now in Mona High's uh, playing style? Well, it should be a staple for any intelligent team. Um, you have to have that component in your, in your, in your artillery, and we, we use it well. Um, the boys played out their hearts, you know. They played with everything, and the, the staff, the team, the coaching, and to have my mom here, you know. My mom raised me on her own, and to see her standing here, and, Touching eight years old and still cheering me on and cheering on my teammates and my players. It really feels good, you know. A lot of people don't have that and don't have the type of man I have. And she, everything that you taught, that fighting spirit that we pass on to the kids that come in from us, Dana and I have been friends from our little boys, you know, to come up and see that we're here on this pitch and be able to do it. Just really proud. Yeah, nothing left to say after that other than congratulations. We'll see you in the final. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. It's not over.